Hello and welcome to Crush Your Mountain Personal Growth. I want to tell you, I have one of the most incredible people on this program today. Without any further ado, let me introduce to you Miss Zippy Marine. Welcome to Crush Your Mountain. So thank you so much. I'm honored to be here this uh, morning, this afternoon, this, okay, I'm in Italy, so it is still midday around one, one something. So I'm very honored to be here this time and to be able to, to be part of this uh, podcast. Thank you so much. Well, you're truly an amazing individual. I'm grateful to have you with us today. I just wanted, to, so I had questions to ask you because we come from the same, we're, we're cut from the same cloth in terms of the BHC. So, you know, I always want individuals to have a, a broad understanding in terms of what it means to be completely helpful. And we brought out some points that being helped in terms of our health, in terms of reversing type two diabetes, losing weight, et cetera, is more than just watching what we eat and things like that. So what does it mean to be holistically conscious of one's health? Well, Thank you for that question because oftentimes we tend of thinking that health already the WHO has already given us the, uh, the description of being healthy. It's not only the absence of sickness or diseases. Now coming back to our to your question, what does it mean to be holistically conscious of oneself, of ourselves? In the first case, the first part of that question, which is the holistically conscious, that means we are not only take, uh, talking of the physical consciousness of who we are, the physical part of us, but also it goes beyond that. It is the understanding of ourselves, which include the physical well-being. How are we physically? This can include awareness of our body, our health, our overall physical condition. Think of your body not as just any container. Think of your body as a living instrument. So it is your entire physical condition. It can also involve recognizing the impact of your lifestyle. How are you living? Are you conscious of, of the way you live? Are you conscious of your nutritious life, the way you, you give your nutrients to your body? See to it that your body is something which you should holistically take care of. And again, how do you ex exercise your well-being? Think of yourself as, I mean, we, we curate very many things in our lives, but oftentimes when it comes to our bodies, we tend to leave some things. So it is the need to be conscious about who we are holistically. Think of our emotional awareness. How do you feel? And we be able to express our emotions, give them the real names, or we sometimes also tend to, I, am, I, am, I, am I sad, annoyed? How, how do I feel? How am I feeling? What is this feeling? Are we able to give the real names of our, to our feelings? This can also involve understanding and acknowledging your emotions. Sometimes we rarely acknowledge them. So unless we acknowledge them, we will never deal with them. Mm -hmm. Or we will never accept them unless we, in the first place, acknowledge those emotions, give them the right name so as to be able to or live with them or be, befriend them. Sometimes we need to be, befriend them because we cannot get rid of them. Okay? No, so, on I, that note, I'm, on that note, yeah, I'm in a minute, but you got me so excited about this. And on that note, I've had a couple of experiences just working with individuals. I was passing by the, the office of a colleague one day, and, I, and there was a lot going on uh, in terms of in, ter in, in terms of some technical issues that affected us uh, company wide and, and things like that. And something said to myself, said to me, you know, I guess intuitively I said something's up. So I said to her, you know, you got all of these things going on here. How are you doing? How, what's going on with you? And she actually said, wow. She said, no one has asked me that. And now when I actually think about how I'm thinking, she's, I'm very sad. And now she began to express the loss that she experienced and that she was coping with. 
in the midst of all the other turmoil. And many times, so you know, we have so much going on in our lives that even when things hit us, we don't take the time to really examine what's going on with us, what's happening internally. And that often drives us to do coping things like eat or some indulge in other things that may not be healthy for us, which is a form of self-soothing, you see, but it's not the best way because we're not addressing those things. So thank you so much for bringing that point. Please, please, please continue with your, your brilliant assertion of things. You see, just on that point, there is need that we recognize the different emotions in us, understand their origins, because sometimes, am I sad? So if I'm, I'm at this point, what brought me until here? What made me to be in this point? Because if you are in the, at that point, that means there was a beginning, there was a start. But which often time, we are not conscious of that. Because we, we are full, we are so busy that we can't even find that me time. Even the five minutes to just sit back and say, who am I? What am I feeling? What am I doing about my feelings? So there is need to recognize the different emotions and understand their origins in order to manage them in a healthy way. Another point on that, being holistically conscious of ourselves is that mental clarity. Being holistically conscious of our one, of oneself involves recognizing thought patterns, beliefs, and cognitive processes. It is not something very small, and it is not so complicated also. So it includes understanding your mindset. We often talk of change of mindset, but before I talk of change, I first need to just pinpoint, understand which is my current mindset towards a certain thing, towards a certain situation, so towards whatever it is. So what is my current? So that I may say, I need to change this mindset. So it is very important that we, in the first place, be conscious on our mental clarity. Because unless we are clear on this, it may not be able for us to change from the situation we are in and we think that we are doomed to be always in that situation. So, But in order to do this, we need to just set some time back. We don't, you, you don't need to set aside a day, an entire day. Some small, small moments during the day. Just get back to yourself. Analyze who you are, how you think, how are your beliefs, your understandings, your way of doing, your way of understanding some situations influence your mental clarity and your way of living in a, a holistic way. Don't think only of you are maybe when you are like that, you feel like, I mean, maybe you are stressed, but then there is also something which is bringing up that stress. So the mental clarity of those beliefs around us, the patterns, the thought patterns, which we have normally when I start thinking like this, it comes up that it will be. Learned. So we are creating a very, a very long pattern of our thoughts, which may not be healthy to our well-being in general. There are also the issue of social relationship dynamics, which we have in our social relationships. In uh, social sciences, we, we, we say, I mean, a human person is a, a relational being. Hmm. A human person is a social being. That's so. It. I, 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 that said, you know, that kind of brings us into sort of our environment, our culture environment. How does that play a role when it comes to what, uh, you know, our health, what we can do to improve our, our perspective, and again, in our, improve our health environment, as it were? And how does that relate to that culture, to, to, to relationships? Talk with us, please. Well, in the first place, uh, the way we relate with ourselves, relationship actually starts with ourselves. We can't be able to appreciate other people if we don't start by appreciating ourselves. If we don't take care of ourselves in the first place, it, is, it will be almost difficult, if not impossible, if not impossible to take care of other persons because we are not used to that. We can only give what we have because you don't give, you can only pour from your abundance, from a full cup. If your cup is full to the brim, then you can pour to the other person. 
So in this case, the issue of relationship, it be, I mean, just to, to, to open a bracket, if you remember when we were in uh, BAC, the issue of uh, the relation, I mean, we can relate with anybody and anything. An example is what we used to say or to cite in class, that the way we relate with our plate, think of your pl plate, what, what do you have on your plate? Have you ever eaten something, just consume your, your, your lunch, I don't know, whatever it is, and at the end of it, somebody asks you, how was it? And you just get back to yourself, how was it really? What was the taste? So it is as if you were eating, consuming what you had, but you was much far from that plate. You are not related because remember that, for example, digestion begins from the mouth. But before it is in the mouth, it begins by, it's like you appreciate. Part of the first topic, uh, the first point, for example, which I've just talked about, was on the holistic consciousness of oneself, of which also it, it involves our, so, I mean, think of spiritual connection also, or envir environmental impact, which will, will come later. But also, it is the way you relate with your plate. How are you relating with that plate? Because that which is on your plate with influ will influence your body and your well-being. So how are you starting to relate with it? How are you thankful for that? You might have worked for it, but how are you thankful to, to have that plate? How are you tasting each and everything, the salad which is there, I don't know, the ham which is there? How can you distinguish the tastes on that plate? How are you relating with it? And that will influence your wellness, your well-being. Oh. It is the same, same, same thing on the relationship we, are, we have with other persons. As I said at the, um, at the beginning is that, okay, it, is, it, it depends on how we relate with, with ourselves in the first place. place. So if we are compassionate with ourselves, whatever thing will happen to us, we will be out of, we will be that we are having that out of compassion with ourselves. We will be out of compassion with ourselves. But then also we can also apply this on other persons. So the issue of how this cultural, which I prefer calling them social cultural influences, because it is not only culture, the relationship which we have in our environment, in our cultural environment, in our social environment, wherever we are, it will also influence our relationship, not only with ourselves, but also with our family members, with friends, with colleagues in, at work, with whoever you come across in your life. So we only can give what we have. And we can also get back from what we, we are giving out. So just to think of your holistic health in terms of relationship, as something which comes back to you. How are you relating with yourself? So how can you also relate with other persons? Because remember that we are not islands. We are relational beings. No, so no. we relate with ourselves, sorry. We relate with ourselves. We can relate with other persons. We relate with our environment. We relate with our divinity. And we relate even with things. Example is the plate we cited earlier. So that's an amazing thing because I'll tell you, um, here in America, in um, other parts of, you know, I guess in England, we have a saying, I've got a lot on my plate. That means I've got a lot going on. So when yeah. we take that idea of the plate, you know, we forget that our digestion is more than just a physical thing from food to going in. Our digestion is our very lives and how we process it. So in many cases, when we look at what we have on that plate, when we look at what we have in our lives, as you're saying, if we're, if we're not taking the time to, to mentally, visually, uh, socially digest the environment, then that too can be a traumatic for us in, in terms of dealing with the individuals, dealing with our holistic health, our state of being and moving forward with that. So again, this is the, uh, it, it's incredible just to hear you speak about it and voice it the way you do. And, and, and you know, again, I just wanted to, again, thank you again for that. I have another thing to ask you in terms of, you know, helping individuals move forward with that. What simple steps can the person take to make changes in their holistic environment, their holistic health? Well, I guess before we start wanting to make change, okay. in the first place, we need to recognize 
which are the areas which really need some change. So getting back just in order to connect with this, uh, to the last point, if in our relational uh, environment, in our, in, in, in our relations, we feel that something is lacking, we sometimes when we may not be able to recognize unless, uh, because sometimes we think that others are the problem. And we may not think that maybe we are the problem also, and we need to just check out some things in us. How comes that I need to be moving from one place to, to the other one? How, how come that very many of my friends are just abandoning me, leaving me alone, and wherever I go, the same, same thing persists? So can we just sit back and just ask ourselves, why me? But not why me, so that you give the, the merit to the other persons. No, why? How can I improve myself in the first place for myself? So if we take this from the point of view, wanting to enrich ourselves, wanting to uh, just getting back to the to, to the what we what what we said earlier, you cannot give what you don't have. So in the first place, you need to have in order to give. So if we are wanting to change or to make something better, we need to, to, to begin from ourselves. And if these coming steps are needed in order to make ourselves better holistically, then we need in the first place to identify which places need change, or maybe it's not change, we need to, okay, ameliorate some other areas which maybe are more are left behind, and if we wish to say also uh, to change the beliefs and the habits. So if we are having some negative habits, then maybe it is, it is time that we change those negative habits into positive habits. But we first of all need to identify them, find the causes of that which is not, which is not making us to be holistically well in whatever sense. If it is uh, something, a habit, if it is a belief, if it is a thought, if it is a way of approaching in our relationship in whatever. So we need to identify the problem, if we, we can call it. Somebody may not feel well to call it a problem, just call it the challenge you are facing. And after identifying that one, then we need to make a change on that. So what I can, and what I often um, prioritize is in the first place, look at yourself. Why do you want that change in the first place? If you really want that change, you will find the way to go for it because each and every one of us is having that power inside us and we can do whatever we want to do because the power is in us. We only want to just pull out that power and just put it in use. We can make anything because we are human persons and we are capable of, of everything. If we decide and we have the will to do that, and we can do that. So identify the why. If the why is bigger than any other excuse, then we can pull out that power and make the change. So identify, first of all, what is that? Because if I tell you, for example, as uh, prioritize regular exercise, but if that one is not needed in, 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 in that case, if you need to, to change the habit of maybe eating the junk food, of course, maybe you want to change exercise regularly, but in the first place, you need to identify what is that which you want to change. That is, of course, I normally say, if you have look for something good for yourself in the sense that you want to change that thing, but where do you start? Where do you begin? So if you begin by identifying, sit back and identify that which is making you not feel good. And if that thing, in this case, of course, maybe, if it is an issue of having a coaching process, then the person there you can you, you can give some practical uh, measures or maybe you can propose something which is uh, concrete. But in this way, I can just put something out to give a general idea on what some somebody can do if you want to reach that one. So the steps you can take is maybe prioritize some regular exercise. Remember that if you are you exercise regularly. Your body also will consume. You see, we used to when we were in, uh, I mean, primary school. I don't know what, what you can. What, what is the equal of that one in the United States? Uh, we used to say, and I don't mind, is a devil's workshop. So often we yeah. we keep on, yeah, we keep on thinking and rethinking and ruminating a lot of things because it's like we are. We don't have anything else to do. So man, no, get up. Do some walking, I mean, in the midst of nature, 
go for, for some exercise in, in gym, I don't know, hit something, hit gym, something, so that at least your body is working and you have a fresh mind to think on some things which, has, which are important in your life. So just give yourself, remember even, I mean, if you put your car in the garage for a very long time, after one month, two months, three months, six months without being used, you will have to struggle to make it move. Yeah. So normally you need to just go and own it for some hours. If you are not driving, own it, put it on for some hours so that it can work well. So it is the same, same with our body. If we are just say, seated, maybe in office for, for 10, 12 hours a day, then uh, we may not be ending well. So another thing is to main, maintain a balanced diet. We cannot give our, our body some junk food or something which will hinder our holistic well-being and expect it to perform well. So there is need for a holistic, to maintain a holistic diet, a balanced diet. There is also the need to prioritize sleep. Somebody will say, then how can I sleep if I need to work? But remember, if you don't rest well, you, you cannot even, I mean, the quality of your work will be less. So prioritize sleep. There is also the, the issue of managing stress. Stress is something which is killing most of us. And very many of the diseases, sicknesses, which we are tackling of late, are caused by stress. Stress, I mean, stress is okay when it is managed in the sense that almost all of us are, are stressed, but the stress should not manage us. Let us say it in that way. Once you are able to manage your stress, it's okay to be stressed, but then if it is too much and if it is bringing damage to your body, to your health, then something needs to be done. Something needs to be uh, taken care of. So also another thing is to stay hydrated. You cannot walk with an, I mean, with a, with, with your with your car if it's not fueled. You need to fuel it. So fuel your car, which is your body, with a lot of love. Be hydrated. There is also the, 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 the issue of the need to cultivate healthy relationships. In the first place with yourself and then with others. If you feel that there is cert certain kind of relationship which is putting lots of harm in your holistic well-being, then uh, something needs to be done. I will not tell you what, but you know yourself what is that which needs to be done. <laughs> okay. Also, there is the need for practice mindful eating. Don't consume that whole plate, whichever it is, without being mindful of what you have on your plate. Even using the, I mean, that proverb, I have, my plate is full, in whatever case you put it, then consume whatever it is on your plate. A lot of things to do, or if it is your real plate, consume them mindfully, because consuming them mindfully will help you get a holistic well-being. Engage in men mental stimuli also, I call them, because I mean, there is need to challenge our, our, our mind also with activities which promote mental, uh, I mean, we can learn very many skills, there are some people who, which can have, they, they have a lot of skills to make your mind work and be, be they just give you the maximum of it. You see, sometimes you can stay without even opening maybe a puzzle to just uh, give some, 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 some work to our mind to think because our mind is elastic. So it can think as much as we work with it, then it can think and it can work much more better. I guess another thing is just to limit the sedentary behavior. If you are sitting for the entire day in office, try sometimes if the boss is not there, just wake up, do some stretching, even for one minute or 30 seconds. That one can help because sometimes we may not avoid it, but we can uh, try to reduce it. And also to get some regular health checkups. Sometimes there are some things which we can prevent, but others we need also to be seeking some uh, medical uh, competence. I guess, Susan, what I can give us the priorities which we need to have. Maybe there are many. I'm going to say this, okay? You touched on so many things that, um, you know, in so many ways, it's just common sense, if you really think about it. But we don't really take advantage of those things. You know, when I, many times, I have to sit back with my clients and reassess what's happening in their lives and just basically what, what they do on a day-to-day, -day, sometimes an hour-to-hour -hour basis. And what happens often is we realize that there are changes that you can make simply that will allow them to just 
improve their state of mind, manage that stress more effectively. Movement is a big part of it because we are so inundated with media, especially here in the States. I don't know how it is over there in Rome, but in, in, here in the States, there's all sorts of political issues and media issues and social issues and individuals get, uh, they, 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 they kind of get themselves steeped as if they're a tea bag in hot water. They are steeped in this stuff and they just deal with all that negative energy. Well, why not just take the time and back up, turn off the TV, turn off the radio and step out and enjoy the sunlight. You mentioned hydration. You know, we don't realize that just having the proper amount of electrolytes, having the proper amount of water, the proper amount of moisture in our bodies does a lot for our mental well-being as well. And we just don't, people Thanks. tend to forget that, you see? You know, and again, taking that walk, you know, I make it a point to get out in the sunlight every morning, you know, and now my office is, by, is, is, is moved to an area where it's by a nice little lake and so I can take a walk and now just look at the lake. I don't have to take a swim. I don't plan to swim, okay? Especially right now, it's cold. But I love to just observe the movement, the patterns of waves, because it's calming to the mind and the body. So just taking those little steps of movement, taking those little steps of, of hydration, and then connecting with those that will build you up and that you can build up. You see, all Very that comes down to that digestion, as it were, taking in the nourishment, not just in a real literal way, okay, but taking it in also in terms of a good, in terms of a holistic, mental, and spiritual way of doing things. You know, Zippy Maureen, you're an incredible uh, colleague and um and and your 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 intelligence is bar none. It's okay. So we want to thank you so very much. Tell us a little bit about your community that you're building, the holistic aura community. Okay, before I say anything on that, I just wanted to just close what you you just uh, touched on and say that we may not have time, but remember that we always have time for what matters for us. There is no time, but we can create that time. We only have 24 hours a day, and it depends on how we use those 24 hours. So we may not apparently have time, but if we love doing something, if we appreciate and love ourselves and want our well-being holistically, then we can create time for ourselves. No one will ever create for you. So if you love yourself, this is a challenge. Create time for yourself. It doesn't matter. And you don't have to create, I mean, one hour, two hours, three hours a day. Start small. Some five minutes in the morning or 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. Just create time whenever you have a, just a small door, window of, of time during your busy day. And you will see the effects. And one day, one time, you will thank yourself. Okay. Back to the holistic well-being or better. The community I'm creating on Instagram, which I've just started, is called the Holistic Aura Hoop. The intention is this. I'm so passionate of holistic well-being. This is more... It is because of the experiences I've had in life. And what I've realized, about, apart from being a sociologist or better, a social scientist, there is no one thing which is called health if you are not holistically well. I explain myself. You cannot say that you are okay. It is, I mean, those who read Bible, there is a, a, verse, a, a verse in the Bible which says, you cannot tell your hand that it, you are, the entire body is okay if your hand is paining. So if your hand is paining, you are not well, you are sick. You cannot say I am well because it is only the leg which is paining. So even if it is a small part of you which is not healthy, you are not healthy. Think about it. If you are ha having stomach problems, can you say that you are okay because the head, the hand, 
the other parts of the body are okay. No, it is you who is sick. So bring it in this way. If you are having stomach problems or maybe headache because I suffered a lot from me, um, headache, migraines and all these things. But while the doctors, the medics were treating that pain in my head, the headache and the rest of it, I guess the problem was not that one. The root causes of my headache was something else. I was also having stomach problems, but it was beyond that. It was the problems which are surrounding me, the relationship I was in, the kind of people I was relating with. But it took me a long, long, long time to realize this. I needed to be in hospital for more than one month to have time to sit back and reflect on my life. It took me time, for example, to have a, a coach to take me through, to be courageous enough to look at myself and to make this, I can say, a journey towards myself and realize who I was really and what was going, what was happening in my life, what I was going through. And this is not something I take for granted because it was the beginning of very many things in my life. It was the beginning of me, apart from the, the fact that I've always been somebody who loved myself. I mean, I walk as if I have the entire world on my shoulders and I walk because it is the way my mother taught me how to walk. I, mean, I need to appreciate myself. I appreciated myself. And I, I never realized that there were small, small, small things which were paining me. Think of a small stone in your, in, in your shoe. Even if you are, I mean, walking straight, but you feel the pinch. You may not recognize it. You may not accept that you are feeling the pinch, but the pinch is there. And if you go along like that for the entire day, at night, I assure you that you will not be walking well. You need to remove that shoe, take out the, 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 the small stone in your shoe, in your shoe, so that at least you will feel well. So that was what I was going through. So it took me part of my health, my psychological well-being also, and I understood that you cannot talk of psychological well-being if there is no spiritual well-being is if there is no physical well-being if there is no mental well-being so we are hum we are human persons and we need to look ourselves as, as a holistic person so you cannot talk of looking at yourself if i'm sick it may not only because i'm having stomach problems can we also check on other things which might be troubling you what are you eating what are your relationships how do you sleep? Maybe even where do you sleep? Because maybe you are sleeping in a place where it, maybe it is cold and maybe it is bringing some cramps on your stomach. See, there are very many things which we need to consider in our lives. And when I realized this, I said, wow, I didn't know that human person was as precious as that. And I started, I began to appreciate every single life, every single minute in my life. And this is what I would like to bring to my community. It is not you as a person. I mean, it's not you as your health, as maybe it is only mental health. If we only look at mental health and the rest of health, health is health when it is looked at holistically. And that is the only thing I can say. So if you...